All right, so our second speaker is Fenchung Li. Uh, she's a professor at the University of Kansas, leading the KU Privacy and Security Lab. She has worked on various topics in computer and network security, including web security, anonymous routing, and cyber physical system security and privacy. And now she's going to talk about certificate, transparency, and third party monitors. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm Fong Chun Li from University of Kansas. Um, so I'm very glad to be here and talk about our recent work on Certificate Transparency Network and the third party monitors. This is a collaborative project with my collaborator from uh, the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, University of uh, Science and Technology of China, and also Beihang University. Unfortunately, all my collaborators cannot be here due to the visa issue, so I'm very glad to talk about it. So first I will talk about the problem and the motivation. I'm sorry. What's wrong with it? Cannot go back. Okay, um, so this work is uh, mostly about the uh, public key infrastructure, and as we know, all know, the PKI is built on the trust of the certificate, and naturally the certificate authorities. And the question is, can we fully trust that? I guess nowadays we all have the answer should be no, because of all the incidents we have seen over the past 15 years. Um, so, so many uh, certificates were misissued or faked uh, in the past. So we ask a question, how can we establish or verify the trust to the CAs? A possible answer is a certificate transparency framework. Uh, since um, Google first announced the um, public uh, log server in 2011, as the CT ecosystem has grown very fast, Many um, PKI, uh, TLS, uh, service providers, and uh, certificate authorities participated in this CT framework. And the main idea of the CT is to uh, provide the transparency during the certificate issuing process. And this is done by requiring all the CAs to submit the certificate to the publicly visible log servers so that anyone, including the domain owners, could issue queries through the monitor and check all the certificate issued under its own name. And we ask the question, um, what is the trust uh, to the PKI? And naturally, this is a trust to the CT. And so, how to establish or verify the trust? Uh, fortunately, CT already built a several uh, verification mechanism to, tr uh, to verify the trust to the log servers. So we use uh, signed uh, certificate timestamps. We uh, store the certificate in the Merkle hash tree at the, C uh, the, the log servers. And we use auditors to periodically check the uh, head of the hash tree to ensure this log is uh, append only. So all these this work ensures the trust to the log server. However, for the CT framework, there is an encrypted component called the monitor, and a little attention has been paid to the trustworthiness of the monitor. So in our work, we, sorry, so in our work, we look at the trustworthy of monitor, and we find uh, in a 2019 study, we find that these monitors are not as trustworthy as expected, because running the monitor is a uh, uh, pretty challenge. Uh, the monitor needs to handle a large volume of the certificate. Nowadays, we have three billions of certi certificates. Every day, there are about 15 million certificates being issued, um, and also we need to handle the parsing of the certificate that are not uh, sometimes not conforming to the standard. And with all these challenges, a natural solution is to use third-party monitors. And then the trustworthy problem become uh, an uh, important question. And in the uh, 2019 study, we found that these monitors are not very uh, trusted as we expect. So they may miss a certain certificate with patterns. And if the attacker knows what is the pattern this monitor will miss, then the attacker can issue the bogus certificate 
certificate carrying this patent, and this certificate will be hidden in the um, CT framework. And the, 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 the consequence is alien attack that was previously enabled by the book certificate will become still possible. In our work, we look at the trustworthy of the monitor, so we um, propose a fourth component to the CT framework. This is called the CT Watcher. And we want the Watcher to work together and provide the inspected service to ensure the reliability of the uh, CT monitor. I will talk a little bit about the design. And our first is our trust model. We assume the monitors can be faulty or malicious. And meanwhile, we want to deploy multiple watchers, which can also be benign, faulty, or malicious. And for the watchers, we want to deploy a um, distributed watcher and take a majority honest assumption. So at least uh, one of the watcher is working correctly, we can still have a, a good uh, inspection of the monitor's service. And to design the city watcher is pretty challenging. The biggest challenge comes from the lack of the ground truth. We don't know what is the right set of the certificate for any given domain. So we hope to uh, leverage the existing monitor service to build this ground truth. We call it a reference set. And besides, for the third party monitors, we have little knowledge about its internal processing, how it was implemented, uh, and how it operates. We have little knowledge. We don't know when the monitor would go wrong, what are the possible reasons of the error. With all this, and the watcher needs to watch a lot of domains. If we, can, uh, we cannot watch all the domain, we want to watch uh, a large number of domains. Um, so this is the architecture of the watcher. It consists of three components. The first is a data collector, and we want to use a data collector to fetch the certificate related to the inquired domain, and then compile a uh, reference set uh, and uh, uh, remove the duplicate record. And after we get a reference set, we want to do a differential analysis, and we want to uh, find the inconsistency. There are two types of inconsistencies. The relevant uh, certificate is missing in the return result, and also the irrelevant certificate uh, uh, included in the result uh, uh, mistakenly. And finally, we build a semi-automated uh, fault analysis module and to use machine learning uh, models and also some manual reasoning to find the possi possible reason of the uh, fault at the monitors. So here I show you the architecture of the light watch. Uh, the light watch consists only of the first com two components. The idea is to let it watch a few the number of domains and also run very uh, lightweightly. And uh, we show the first component is a data collector, and then the second component is the uh, inconsistency analyzer. The main idea is to build this reference set and the automatically identify the missing certificate due to three major uh, major reasons. The, uh, one is the service delay and also the output limitation and then the uh, insufficiently uh, monitored the logs. And also, because we uh, may have some ad hoc error and some uh, uh, irrelevant uh, certificate in the result, so we propose to run this uh, search for multiple continuous period period of time, so we call it a long-term tracking. In that way, we can remove the um, uh, irrelevant uh, uh, certificate in the return the result. And then the, 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 the output is a feedback to the uh, semi-automated uh, fault analyzer, and uh, the watcher installs a third component is called the full watcher. Compared with the light watcher, the full watcher requires more uh, operational overhead. And to do this uh, fault analyzing, uh, we have two approach. First is uh, from our returned result, we already have the missing certificate, so we label them uh, with the characteristics related to the certificate itself, the domains uh, related to the certificate, and also the submission uh, date. And based on that, we uh, build a random forest uh, uh, classifier to identify the uh, possible reasons of the missing, and we also manually analyze the top five 
features to derive the what we call the trigger features. So these are the more practical reasons of the missing. And based on that, we can uh, do experiment and also using two statistical measures to validate the trigger features. And once verified, the trigger feature is a feedback to the uh, classifier to improve the prediction accuracy. So we propose to develop both types of features dynamically uh, in to build this watcher ecosystem. And the light watchers can monitor only a few number of domains. And there, the result trigger, trigger domains will be fed back to the uh, full watcher for um, full analysis. Um, here I will show you our implementation and uh, some evaluation results. We run the watcher against uh, six popular third-party monitors, and we run uh, 50, 52 uh, days of operation. And we randomly select uh, 4,000 domain to check. And this, uh, based on this, we build a reference set containing about uh, 1 million uh, certificates. And we found almost every uh, monitor miss uh, uh, smaller or f fewer or more uh, certificate and the uh, uh, CRT monitor missed about 80K certificate, but the Facebook monitor um, and the Intrust uh, search monitor missed about 600, which is uh, about 65% uh, of the entire certificate. And then we identify the missing certificate based on uh, the three uh, major major um, problem, and we see most of them, these missing are caused by the service delays, but uh, some um, are because of the um, output limit of the monitor. And besides that, we do the semi-automated analysis to identify 11 service bugs of the uh, six monitors. And for the remaining, we still have some missing certificates that do not show obvious patterns, so we don't know the possible reason behind that, and this would be our future research. And let me show you a few examples. So uh, one fault we identify uh, regarding the census monitor is it cannot process the certificate with very um, large text in the DNS name domain, so it will always have a passing error. And then for the interest search and the Facebook monitor, we found that they cannot process the uh, domain name using the internationalized uh, country code. So for any certificate containing this code, uh, they cannot return the certificate. And besides, we found that the Facebook monitor has a rendering problem when it returns a search result in the HTTP, uh, HTML pages. And so um, for the domain with a large number of certificates, this error typically will happen. Um, we also measure the operational cost of the light watcher because we really want it to be lightweight. So in, um, uh, in our experiment, uh, we uh, measure on average the watcher requires only one to two megabytes for storage and the processing time is about uh, 163 seconds. And most of this search, if it's not uh, as large as, uh, um, it's not very large, the search service will be offered by the monitor for free. So here I will conclude. In conclusion, we present the City Watcher as an additional service to inspect the uh, monitor in the City framework, and overall it will enhance the security of the City framework. And we design two watchers together. They can provide a scalable and a practical solution. And we also test this design in the real world setting and identify several um, uh, implementation errors and service errors of the six commonly used uh, third-party monitors. And we also reported these uh, uh, errors to them, and some of them have been corrected uh, now. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. Really great talk. Uh, so now we have some time for questions. So as before, please uh, state your name and affiliation. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe I can ask a quick question. So you, you just ended saying that you reported these issues to the vendor. So can you tell us a bit more like about the disclosure process and exactly like how they reacted, um, how they fixed the issues? 
Yeah, um, so we found um, we found about 11 uh, service floors, and some of them are easy to see, you see, because of those rendering, fl uh, rendering floors. So we re report that to Facebook, and they noticed that. They said, yes, they, they, they reviewed their code and found that. They already corrected. But after that, we also find that they still there ex still exists some error. Um, so they raised the, uh, their upper limit from 5,000 to, to 10,000, but after that, they returned the latest result, sometimes it's empty. We don't know why. We are keep reporting that. Okay, thank you. So we, we have time for some more questions. Um, you, you said like when you presented your implementation, so you were talking about random forest. Uh, any reason why you took random forest? Like did you try other algorithm? Uh, yes, uh, so when we look at that uh, um, uh, fault analysis, and we want to find a reason behind that, so we consider, you see, the random forest uh, and maybe decision trees. Maybe this is a very con uh, conventional machine learning method, but it provides some reasoning behind the result. So it shows us certain patterns um, because those features are not, uh, uh, you see, directly understandable. So we do manual analysis, try to reason uh, based on the pattern to reason what could be the implementation error lead to the, you see, the, those pattern. Okay, yes, that totally makes sense. Uh, and yeah, maybe a final question from my side. So you said like your threat model is both like malicious actors or like it can be buggy. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Like in, in which cases was, yeah, were, was this due to like malicious uh, intentions or buggy? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. Uh, so I would say in this work, uh, we consider um, any possible reasons behind, you see, the uh, certificate missing phenomena. And it may be because of the uh, service provider is malicious, but we do not, you see, uh, consider this is a major reason because the third party uh, monitors they, no matter whether they provide a free service or you see pay for it, uh, a subscription, their intention is still to provide a reliable service, right? Um, but we do not exclude the malicious from the threat model because in the future, if there are other more and more uh, monitors, it may become, uh, mani uh, you see, some intention to be malicious. We just want to have an inspection service to uh, detect such, uh, such malicious behavior. Okay, yes, that totally makes sense. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, there is a question. Okay, go ahead. Please state your yeah. name and affiliation. Yeah, so I'm Carlo Wu from Stony Brook University. Um, so I have like a um, philosophical question because at the beginning you were saying that, you know, we move from trusting the CAs, now we are trusting the monitors. And then now you have a watcher of monitors. And so it, does that mean that we are just shifting tr the trust again to the watchers? Then like we are doing this sort of like trusting this and then this trusting that, like this, does this solve like the fundamental issue of like who should I trust? Yeah, very good question. So um, I guess the answer is uh, not to the trust itself, but the transparency. So for example, in the in the past, uh, we use a certificate and uh, our trust to the certificate or the CA are blind. Um, we, we just uh, assume it's trusted. But in fact, there might be many reasons insider attack or you see the misinsurance, misconfiguration, so the CA misissues a certificate. What we really want is a transparency, a framework that we can check the status and we can verify if there's anything wrong. And so back to the question, uh, the CT framework assume no component is trustworthy, so they adopt uh, the distributed trust model, and they also use auditors, many auditors together to verify the log server. And for the monitor, because it assumes everyone can act as a monitor, so they do not have such design, and then we extend the trust model to say we need a distributed trust component as the watchers. They do not, they are not, uh, you see, uh, trusted by itself, but uh, together with uh, the majority honest assumption, we can still build that transparency. Yeah, okay, thank you. 
Uh, hi, my name is Joe Hall from the Internet Society. Um, th sorry, the light, you may not be able to see me. Um, th this is great work. Certificate transparency is so complicated. There's so many sharp edges. Um, you've found a bunch. Um, it, it seems like it's so hard to do and it's not really evolving. I'm wondering, after doing all this work, I if you step back and do you have any insight, and you're totally welcome to say no, do you have any insight on like, what features of what might replace it or what might serve a better system than that because it seems like it's kind of not not evolving not going anywhere and, and I, I worry that it might just all break but i was wondering if you have any design insight and you can just say no if you don't but <laughs> i guess i just get or y you can also take this offline if you if you want to continue discussing. Yeah. Then uh, let's thank uh, thank Chun again. <laughs>